Welcome back to Pokemon Platinum. We're going to actually kind of really be starting our journey now that we've gotten past the tutorial town and tutorial fights. First real route. Besides catching our H our first HM slave to do. <laughs> oh, uh, so, uh, yeah, one of, one of the biggest problems with this gen is there's so many fucking HMs. There's like, oh god, eight. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so D Foggy you only D Foggy you only use exactly once. But even then, though, there's that still means that there's seven, which means that you can't even have everything be on one Pokemon yeah. and only take up one slot, which you know is. Oh man, I'm so. It took them way too long to get to get rid of HMs. To get yeah. rid of HMs, like, it, and they had to take such big baby steps too, like, because in Gen five. They knew that people didn't like HMs, so... So they made the main game perfectly playable without them, but you still needed them to get stuff? Yeah, like, I think there was, like, one time where you needed to use Cut, and then, like... Just to teach you how to use it, and that was it. And then, maybe you had to use Strength, like, once or twice, I don't really remember. But it was yeah. just, like, okay. Like, I, I guess that's... But I feel like it's also something that shouldn't have taken them five games because this is something that was annoying people by game like two <laughs> so because i mean as much as i love gold and silver even then they that game had unnecessary hms like you didn't need both surf and waterfall and whirlpool when like two of those moves in battle are nearly identical and the other one is just bad <laughs> the so... thing was like in gen one getting a new hm actually felt kind of cool uh, because like, oh, you have this special move that lets you affect the environment. That's pretty, that's pretty nifty and novel and stuff. But like, it got annoying as the games went on because they kept adding more and more, and that overbalanced it, and it became cumbersome. Yeah, you basically. Know? And uh, I don't know. I, I, it it kind of goes back to the problem Pokemon has of, okay, they had these things people really liked about the first game and they're sort of in denial over the fact that not everything about these things people liked about the first game was necessarily flawless. Yeah. Not to mention... Oh, it, it, it's, it's Shinx, one of the Pokemon line I really like from this generation. It's okay. I don't really like... It, 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 really, it should, really should have been Electric Dark in his final evolution, but whatever. It, um... Yeah. It kind of looks like a poor man's Pikachu. Oh, oh no, that's that, that, no, that, that, that's Pachi, that, yeah, <laughs> Pachi Uh So, uh, you see, the what Pokemon generations, in terms of designs, like Pokemon designs, you like and don't like, that's all subjective. For me, I, I still think... Three is my least favorite. For me, I feel like four is probably my least favorite in terms of... Designs. For most people, it's either Gen 3 or Gen 4 for the no, most No, a lot part. of people really don't like a lot of the ones in Gen 5. Uh, you know, oh, there's the garbage Pokemon, and there's the ice cream Pokemon, so it's a bad Gen Pokemon, you know. Even though it's kind of not. It's yeah. just so weird that they introduced those kind of Pokemon in the Gen that's trying to take itself kind of seriously. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that's true, but they also... It was also the America generation, so I think that they're fitting <laughs> in that. Well, no, if you're going to make an America generation, the Pokemon need to be hot dogs and hamburgers. <laughs> okay. Uh, that sounds like a Yokai Watch monster, now that I think about like a like a walking hot dog or a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. But, yeah, so it's... I would still say that Gen 4, in terms of most of the Pokemon designs... I'm just not a huge fan of. Not that I hate all of them. Like, Lucario's cool. Cool enough. I do like Shinx. Um, uh, God, I, I have to stretch. Uh, the, the things that actually bother me aren't... Because most of the... Most, I should say, of the new Pokemon are... Like, they don't jive with me but they're they're not they don't offend me except for Badoof because it's just kind of a, it's just kind of a generation where a lot of the Pokemon yeah. designs are uh, you're apathetic toward them right yeah the the only ones that really I don't like like I actively dislike are um uh the binary line because we'll get to it yeah <laughs> and the evolutions that they added now I get what they were trying to do because most of the evolutions that they added were to Pokemon that were kind of lackluster stat-wise. So they wanted to, you know, give them an evolution to boost up their uh, 
their like combat potential, which okay, that's fair. They did that in Gen 2 too. The only problem is is that aside from Gallade, whose design is actually really cool, I think I dislike every single evolution design that they Even added. Even the evolutions? They're fine. Glaceon and Leafeon are fine. I don't dislike them, but I don't particularly like them. But stuff like the the Magmar and Electabuzz evolutions. I like Ray, I like Ray Piri, but otherwise I agree with you. Well, uh, well, I mean, we had this discussion <laughs> in Twilight Princess yeah. where I just I feel like he's got too much going on. Where, That's totally fair. Yeah, but like, I don't really like them. All I that get the much. feeling like uh, like every generation has a different main Pokemon designer, and they all have a different idea of how these monsters. Should they, I mean that. I mean you're not. I mean you're not wrong. Yeah, it's. <laughs> They've definitely kind of... They've cutified a lot of the Pokemon as time has gone on, unfortunately. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put that's, it. Because that's you something, can yeah. Because in Gen, Gen 1, uh, like, there were a few cute Pokemon, but for the most part, most of them looked kind of like serious monsters. <laughs> like, yeah. Which was the point, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then I think that mentality sort of continued on into Gen 2, for the most Gen part. Gen 2 definitely feels the most like these Pokemon were fit with the Gen 1 cast art style wise like I feel like there's the least amount of clash which makes sense considering so many of those Pokemon were cut Gen 1 Pokemon um I feel like Gen 3 is re really where they started to have a much different rounder kind of art style for the most yeah. part and I mean granted I still I have a soft spot for quite a few Gen 3 Pokemon like Breloom and Numel in particular and shop it the the shop it line because mwah, I love those guys, but definitely that is where they kind of started, you know, making most of the Pokemon much more round in in features, and the a lot of the earlier Pokemon were much more sharp and uh, like rugged. I guess is maybe the word I'm kind of looking for. Well, we say this as we're looking at Psyduck, which is one of the <laughs> roundest things. Yeah, in, but in like cast, if you but... but if you think about Golduck though, like there's a lot of sharp angles on that design. Yeah. Yeah. Um and then it and I mean and it just keeps on getting more like that there. Like I feel like once you get to Gen 4, there's like a new kind of that's where the new status quo for the art style starts. And then in the generations following, you know, it's just kind of different variations on that newer art style. Because I feel like stuff like, if you compare like a Gen 4 and a Gen 7 Pokemon, they will feel much more similar than if you compare to Gen 1 and a Gen 6 Pokemon, if that makes sense. So, and I mean, granted, in, at that point, you know, it's just, it's just a different art style now. And you just have to look at the Pokemon for what they are and which ones you like more is just a subjective thing. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think the I think the other thing is the way they presented the Pokemon back then, because back in Gen One and Two, they presented them in magazines and stuff with like the Sugimori watercolor stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I... was which was a which was a much more Sub... soft color, more softer coloring. Yeah, it was it was more subdued, and it, it, it yeah. made it like it made it easier to look at these creatures and take them sort of seriously rather than going ooh kawaii. Yeah, they're much vibrant, more vibrant now. And I and to give the game some credit, it will give the series kind of a, some more credit because Pokemon is not just the games anymore. Um, they've kind of leaned into that. Now, because that's one thing I really like about um, the new Sun and Moon anime is because they've leaned into the fact that the Pokemon themselves have become a lot more... I don't want to... like it's. I'm not trying to say that they become more kid-friendly because this game has always been aimed at six-year-olds. But they become... because the Pokemon in general are a lot cuter and lighter overall, It they changed the tone of the anime to be more wacky slice-of-life kind of stuff. Which, Which is weird because the show that's that's the show that constantly references twenty five plus year old anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just it's um, it's just one of those things where I just I I appreciate them going for that. Um, did your thing glitch right now? Because I'm not seeing anything on the screen. Uh, something might have happened on the rendering, but that's much I can do about that. Um, <laughs> I assure you we're getting an Espeon. <laughs> I had the same problem when I was doing Kid Icarus Uprising. Maybe when we're doing, uh, when we're uploading it, it will be here and we'll be talking like complete nonsense people to the folks at home. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> I hear a game playing, but I don't see a game playing. 
Uh, anyway, um, I, I I forget where I was going, so I don't. If I had a point, it's it's long gone. Um, yep. Oh, there okay, we go. Now we're, yep. Now we're getting Umbreon. So this Pokemon uh, likes to not focus on its personal personal growth and just shove its emotional problems in a corner and never ever look at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should name a Golbat Batman one of these days. I'll tell you like what, though. Money. If Pokemon was trying to shake off the 90s era, Pokemon are satanic because they do evolution and stuff thing. Oh, Adding God. dark oh, Pokemon God. was not the way to go. <laughs> uh, so it's... <laughs> well, dark Pokemon were kind of, Dark types were kind of necessary. Oh, the dark types because psychics were just ridiculous in general. Oh yeah, a I lot know. Of things I'm, I'm just making really fun cool. of. I'm just making fun of it. It's like, okay, how are we gonna fight back against this this perception that Pokemon are satanic and evil by adding actual dark Pokemon? Okay. Uh, sure. so if I remember correctly, in Gen in Japanese, dark isn't so much the like the name for it's more more kind of implies that the like they fight dirty. If yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. So it's not Something so much like that. that they're dark; they're just assholes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> and for some reason, Umbreon's name in Japanese is just literally Blackie. What? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I um, they don't have the like the Eon kind of thing in Japanese. No, that, that's that's purely a Western thing. Oh boy, it's the best. It's the actual best part of the game. Oh my god. Um, that you can't do anymore because there's no Wi-Fi. Oh man. Yeah, the uh, the underground. The underground is like like legitimately the best part of the game, and it I, was really uh, it was really fun. I did it a lot. Yeah, like I mean, for one thing, it gave you relatively easy access to evolution stones and like fossils, which still to this day are relatively annoying to get. So you know, it's that's a huge improvement from Gen Three where. If I remember correctly, like, evolution stones are just a gigantic pain in the ass to find. Um, no, wait, or am I thinking of Gen 2? Well, I know they for sure they're a pain in the ass to find in Gen 2. I don't really remember Gen 3 that that well. But the, the Underground is just really cool. It's a, it's just a, it's a fun, relaxing little minigame. And the f I didn't know that you couldn't play it anymore because I forgot that you needed to have the Wi-Fi on in order to do it. Why do you so, need to have the Wi-Fi on in order to do it? Because you could technically play it with other people. I don't know. Yeah, I, I know that it's, it seems dumb to force you to have it on, considering that you absolutely can play it single player. That'd be but... like that'd be like if Dark Souls suddenly became unplayable when you didn't have an internet connection. I mean, yeah, I know. <laughs> come on, <laughs> stupid, right? Yeah. yeah. Dumb. So there, I believe there are like fan proxy servers. Or something yeah. like that. Uh, em Emil got all of the network stuff to work. Oh, yes. well, that's cool. Yeah. Do are you able to show any of the underground in this? No, I don't really have the access to that, and that's a basic run through. We're we're going to be nowhere near as in depth as Emil is. So if you really want the nitty gritties, you can watch his playthrough. Yeah, we're not about we're not about making this playthrough longer than it needs to be. We're, we're not about we're not about fancy graphics with you know IV charts and all that other stuff. Whenever he encounters every new Pokemon. Oh, that sounds like it takes work, man. Like, that's that's a lot of effort. That he, I he puts do. a lot of time into these games, so you should appreciate what he does for you, people. Oh, dude, <laughs> Xenoblade probably should have killed him. <laughs> like, yeah. it actually probably he, should have killed him. He, he, he has written, I think he has actually actually written the most comprehensive guide there is on the internet for uh, that game. Yeah, because there wasn't uh, a good enough one for him to follow when he was trying to do an LP, so it's like, I've, I'll make I, my own. I'm sorry, my <laughs> eye has been fixed on the large screen this entire time, so I haven't been paying attention to the small screen off to the side, but that's actually kind of charming, how the screen on your, like, Pokedex thing is Game Boy monochrome yep. green. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You, could, you could you could change it to be like a calculator and what time of day it is and stuff. Yeah, they they do. The, the Pokedex is actually the Pokedex is actually pretty neat. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I do actually. I will say I will give this game something over Gen Five in that I feel like they did a better job with the the bottom screen stuff in this game than they did in Gen Five, where they it was like Dream World kind of stuff you could do, and you need to have like the internet connection on in order to get the the cool stuff to be on the bottom screen in Gen 5, but that also wasted battery, and so unless if I was playing with someone, I kept it off the entire time. So, yeah. And I, I like, you know, it's it's good to have, you know, 
the at a glance look at how your party's doing without having to go into the menu. Open the menu. Yeah, so you know, and and I do like the the the, the Pokemon sprite art for like the little sprites near the near the health bars in the menus and stuff have always been charming. So being able to see them when walking around is also pretty cool. So oh, I forgot how OP you are with evolved Pokemon at this point in the game. Yeah, because 71 HP is ridiculous for the first gym. It's also a, it's also Vaporeon though. Yeah, I'm which has a lot of which does have a lot of HP. It's, but it's, it's still, a tank. <laughs> but still, that's yikes. 